All right, guys, so we are here at Leviathan HQ, as you can see by some of the beat-up boxes back here. I am getting some pallets in today for Vigor, so we're going to be back in stock come tomorrow, at least on Leviathan Subs, Amazon a little bit longer. Anyway, I am in the process of writing a course, and because I've been writing this course, I need to touch base on some old techniques that I don't necessarily do, but since it's going to be the be-all and end-all of courses... I am going through step by step of all the stuff that people still do and still have some use. So to get some practice with the old stuff, I'm doing some stuff I haven't done in a while. But in the past two years, unsurprisingly, things have changed, particularly with hard clamping. I actually did it right. So <laughs> basically, there was a few issues when I first started doing hard clamping one there are so many different variants to clamping particularly thunder's place and if you follow m9 stuff there's some conflicting evidence and you know you have to decide who to believe then with hard clamping it is particularly hard to get right because it doesn't conform to the shape of your penis so if you don't necessarily know what to go for it's going to be very hard to do so back when i was doing clamping like as a big part of my routine, I would be doing stimulated clamping, which quite honestly probably did lead to some minor pelvic floor strain. I didn't realize it at the time, but knowing what I know now, I've had mild pelvic floor strain, basically just frequent urination, difficulty getting it all out. So if you're masturbating while clamping, it is probably not in your best interest for two reasons. One, pelvic floor strain. Two, it's going to be harder to over expand from what I've noticed. And I still got to do some tests, but that's the first thing. So another thing that kept coming up was that there's a lot of confusion with all the different clamping dogmas. I called it the clamping meadow just because, you know, it's just like a gamer term. But we'll get we'll touch more on that in a bit. Actually, first, how I got it to work. Let me go get my stuff. Now, forgive me, this is not the best proxy for this. So what I basically did was I took a silicon sleeve put it on my penis at the base that is so for simplicity's sake we'll just flip this around then I folded it over my penis and this will made a strong cushion and I think that's going to be the most important thing for hard clamping moving forward that you need some kind of rubber rather than fabric which I was using beforehand to get the stint then you put this on the base Click, click, click. I used to kegel at this point. If I was able to still get blood in, I would uh, close it a little more. As soon as I stopped being able to get blood in, I would loosen it one grade. Now I just keep it at the place where I was not able to get more blood in when I cabled. What then happened is, is once I started losing my erection blood was able to go in so after the first one or two minutes that's when i would start seeing the expansion so i would just hold this for five minutes take it off keep the silicone on fire goat rolls for you know one to two minutes and then put it back on ideally you take a longer break than i did and then another five minutes now what I just described to you is expansive hard clamping. The difference between hard clamping and soft clamping is the tools you use. So if you're using toe shields, which I don't necessarily think that's a great idea, or cock rings, it's technically soft clamping because you're using a soft rubber compared to a hard plastic. The end results will be the same. It's just soft clamping can be more intense in my experience. Um, then when we're talking about hypoxic or bfr clamping we are trying to mimic blood flow restriction therapy that's it so we are going to try to hold this clamp for 10 to 15 minutes closer to 10 and i'll explain more in a second to get as much angiogenic stimulus as possible yes i know that doing five minutes will also have a hypoxic stimulant angiogenic stimulant whatever research shows the strongest stimulant for like time is 10 minutes occluded so if we are trying to get as much angiogenic stimulus as possible with 
as little mechanical damage as possible because we did our mechanical damage with interval pumping. One 10 minute sets of BFR or hypoxic clamping is all you need. Now there is a certain individual that goes by sodium who says you need to strangle your penis with 40 toe rings or toe shields, whatever they're called for quite a while. That is quite dangerous because first of all, there's conflicting reports, but a nerve can only go for like two minutes with no oxygen whatsoever. When we plan out like rep ranges for compression hanging and other, you know, occluding things, we say a 20 minute max under hypoxia. So we don't damage the nerves. And it's going to depend on the blood flow. With clamping, you will get some blood flow. And we are talking about a blood sponge. So there's going to be a lot of excess oxygen. That's why we do 10 to 20 minutes compression hanging. With clamping, though, it's a little more dangerous because it is a high pressure event. But um, that being said, you can do up to 10 minutes of clamping per set safely. But you need enough time to reoxygenate that tissue, bring more fresh oxygen into that tissue. So then we have expansive clamping and this is mimicking the pumping because what we're doing is as the internal inflammation builds up and pressure builds up the tunica starts to give out so that's going to cause it to balloon more and more out set by set by set this is how m9 does it it does work i just was not able to do it with the tools he recommended at the time so if we are trying to get girth gains with clamping, we're not using a pump. We want to do expansive clamping, which means we're going to want more sets to promote collagen mm -hmm. fatigue and to limit the negatives of being uh, hypoxic for that long. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to do the main takeaways, expansive clamping is going to mimic pumping. We are going to do that for much more time. And then with hypoxic BFR clamping, it is a finisher. We do not do blood flow restriction therapy every day for training arms, for example. We do it just enough to bring up the vasculature and the nerve function in a physiotherapy patient. It is quite intense and quite damaging, so we need to take it slow. With expansive clamping, if you limit the hypoxic stimulant, you won't have nearly as many issues. So, Basically, my guidelines right now, if you're doing expansive clamping, mimicking M9, you should only be doing five minute sets. Take two to five minutes off, depending on how much you care about discoloration, and repeat. If you're following me with blood flow restriction therapy uh, tactics, one 10 minute set after you're pumping or some other time during that day, every other session. Now, let's go over the comments from that post. Because, like, of course, as soon as I make it, everyone's like, I love, not everyone, but a lot of people that are big clamping proponents were chiming in. I started double clamping again, says Captain Unobvious. Um, this is another thing. So, the problem with hard clamping is since it is such a, since um, hard clamping, it limits the size of the stint. Bigger penises will need more of these. So you just have to stack them. And that's where it gets tricky figuring out how much pressure you need because you could technically limit a lot at the first one and then just squeeze a little bit on the sides to get more pressure up shaft. So you got to play around with it. That's why, again, I'm not a big fan of hard clamping. There's a lot less granularity or the granularity that is there is very hard to tune. That's why I like soft clamping because it's just the number of rings you put on. Anyway. This one's a little weird, sorry Captain Unobvious, but basically he's saying that the expansion that he gets after clamping, double clamping, for about 25 minutes lasts for days. That's kind of unheard of. Even with like some of the bigger clampers I've heard of, you know, proponents of it, it would only last for a day at most, like that inflammation. So I'm not saying that's not what's happening, but I would... Make sure you're not actually hurting yourself in the process because that kind of like systemic inflammation is not necessarily a good thing. Now, he did say he tried three clamps and he said it just felt like his skin was going to split. So one of the main things with clamping is since it's internal pressure, 
some guys, particularly if they have, let's say, a less restrictive lymphatic response. So like some guys will just develop a lot more edema from pumping and that's going to limit the, how much the working chambers of the penis are actually being stretched. So they will respond much better to clamping compared to pumping. It seems like Captain Unobvious is one of these individuals. Well, all that stuff just came in. I realized I forgot my hand cart, so I'm going to have a fun hour. Anyway, we were talking about putting on triple clamps, correct? Now, another thing Captain Obvious said, unobvious was is like after a good clamping session my erection quality drops significantly due to the fatigue for the rest of the day and this is why i'm not really a big fan of clamping is because a lot of people don't realize how intense it is and i mean if you're thinking about this from like a bodybuilding perspective if you train your chest super hard you're gonna have limited chest performance that day however Penile tissue is not exactly the same thing, especially if we're just trying to fatigue collagen. If we are just trying to change the size and shape of the collagen, that doesn't really change the function of the penis. So the endothelial tissue is the working tissue. The collagen of the tunica albuginea is the passive tissue. So technically, if you do this right, you should still have stellar erection quality and slightly bigger since the collagen in your tunica albuginea is fatigued. So you should have like maybe one eighth to a quarter of inch of temp gains from sex or during sex after PE. Okay. Undoubtedly, I still firmly believe expansion in expansion hard clamping. I'm assuming you meant expansive hard clamping, but I feel like I can only get the correct expansion like half the time. It's finicky as hell. And this is the main issue that I've always had with hard clamping is if your penis does not fit this shape, it's just not going to work for you. Then that's why if you add a little bit of silicone to fill in the gap, if you will, and even the pressure, it works much better. So for about six bucks, you can have a relatively good clamp if you have enough girth. Another issue with cable clamps is that you need to be like a minimum of five and a quarter base girth, so above average to start with it. And then it gets more intense the bigger you get. But I am Zang Grieve chimed in. I am definitely, it's definitely tricky. Gotta get as close to your base, to the pubic bone as possible for the best results. In my experience, I've seemed to found the spot for myself. I'm just going for expansion by size. It took a long time to find it though. So again, conflicting evidence. I used to believe that you need to be close to the base, but for my own results yesterday, it was like, I wasn't even pushing to the fat pad. I just made sure that my entire exposed shaft was going to be under the stint essentially. And I was able to get expansion and it was relatively intense, not as intense as like soft clamping, but with a hard clamp, I was able to pull it off. So again, so much trial and error is required. And since I'm kind of am a dick expert now, it's not that hard for me to do it right. But again, if you're a newbie, it's going to take at least a week and a half to get it right. If you ever do get it right. Carl, who the guy who makes my thumbnails. I don't think there is a clamping meta, but a whole bunch of clamping dogma and confusion. It's tomatoes, tomatoes, whatever you want to call it. Clamping meta, clamping dogma. It's that, There's such a strange distinction between hypoxic clamping and expansive clamping. Again, I said something out of my ass three months ago and it kind of stuck, so we got to deal with it. Yes, all expansive clamping is also hypoxic clamping if you let those sets go sufficiently long. But you got to think of the terms used for it specifically for um, what the goal is. For example, power lifting, you do shorter reps, even though we're using the same exercises as bodybuilders, but it has two different results. One strength building, one is purely for mass. So it's a good way to put it. It'd be like, Hypoxic clamping is better for erection quality. Expansive clamping is going to be pumping replacement. Can there ever really be a meta about anything? I mean, yeah. Um, about with a large degree of individual variability in tunica thickness and malleability, I highly doubt there's only what works best for me. And that will be relatively similar for many guys. Um, I mean... <laughs> 
the protocols are definitely a meta like someone today was just talking about <laughs> uh side to side stretches which I'd, please do not do it's really a good way to fuck up your pelvic floor but that was the meta for three months even though everyone's gonna have different penises everyone's gonna follow the same way so again it's just you're looking too hard at the word choice i used um don't really worry about it too much. And then one thing that bugs me is that we don't make a difference in recommendations when it comes to 4.2 point, 4 point, four and a quarter inch dicks and six and a quarter inch thick penises. They completely have different pressures to achieve expansion of the tunica due to the laws of physics. Large dudes need a lot less before we take strength adaptation of the tunica to the wall. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, if you dial in the occlusion because it's going to be person based, you know, like how it feels, it really doesn't matter. But again, we can work it out more. All right, Jaw Blow Faux Show 2 um, basically asks the question at the beginning. There's a lot of questions between expansive and hypoxic clamping. What size rings for specific girths to ensure proper expansion for hypoxia i'm not sure i'm not the only one that is dying for an updated in-depth dive on clamping well the thing is i don't really consider myself a clamping expert i really still think there's some major issues with clamping but for me you got to choose what works best for you and like i'm going to try my best to make my protocols match what you need so right now if you have issues with lymphatic response try clamping expansive clamping that is everyone should do hypoxic clamping expansive clamping is going to be probably more stressful to the penis just because of how much pressure you are building up pumping is just better in my opinion at not overly stressing out the internal tissues but stretching out the tunica so if we're trying to get girth gains while keeping good erection quality pumping is probably the way to go let's see all right, so that was really all the useful comments that I had an opinion on. So I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Again, I gotta play around with a few things. I gotta compare this to soft clamping, expansive soft clamping and go from there. Um, I gotta figure out how to work this in with my other PE stuff because the golden path is still happening. I need to measure sometime this week. So <laughs> I gotta make time. Um, I just wanted to make this video because a lot of people think I am dogmatic, but that's far from the case. If there is evidence that will change my mind, I will surely change my mind. It just has to be there. Um, I still do think a lot of the old stuff is dangerous. And if we don't have a good scientific basis on why we're doing this, why is it worth the risk? With hard clamping, it's going to follow the same principles of expansion as pumping. It just is a matter of making sure you don't overwork the tissues too much. And that's something I'm going to have to look more into. Uh, but for the time being, if you want my, what I think is the definitive way to grow your penis, check out my books in the description below. BD's Big Book of Length, BD's Girth Expansion Pack. Once I make this clamping update, it will be freely available for you. You will be emailed when the update is ready. So... If you're interested in following along with the book instead of piecing together everything through my YouTube, that's probably your best bet. Also, there is 768 units of Vigor Fruit Punch sitting on my office's receiving area right now. So if you're interested in Leviathan Wellness Vigor, it will be up uh, tomorrow, which would be f March 12th. It should last a relatively short time because that's about how much we are pushing each month at this current rate so get it while it's hot guys i will talk to you in the next one